All right, so good evening learners. Welcome to the session on MEG7, Indian English Literature. As you all know, or as you may already be aware, IGNO does not give you full classes of all the portions. Portion completion is not a priority. Our priority during these contact sessions are to facilitate you to deal with doubts and queries that you have in most of the cases i know you have doubts about everything but then unfortunately time will not permit us to cover all the areas or all the 10 blocks or nine blocks but then we'll try to figure out the or try to cover the core areas the core topics we'll try to deal with how to approach the paper per se and how to approach the course as a whole so those are things that we need to work on and uh, yeah we have 10 contact sessions generally for all the uh, papers. But when it comes to optional papers, we may not have all the 10 sessions per se, but we may have three to four to five sessions. So currently the sessions have been scheduled from today, which is 27th of March, Monday to 31st of March, Friday. So we have five contact sessions, two are each from 5.30 PM to 7.30 PM which would cover 10 sessions, sorry, five sessions or 10 hours put in numbers. And uh, maybe we'll have a follow up later where we'll again have say two to three to five sessions. If the RC uh, obliges to that. All right, so let's get started. And as we get started, let me get started with some basic things, some basic elementary things. Most of you may be familiar with these elementary things by now, but I'm doing it for those who are still not aware of what MEG7 is, how to approach the paper, what to deal with it, where to gather the resources from. So as far as MEG7 is concerned, the paper is titled Indian English Literature, a simple title as that, Indian English Literature. The reason why I understand they have divided this into clusters is before, the learners were not sure about how to choose the optional papers. And they used to pick up papers randomly. And sometimes when they go for a professional approach, that may not be of any use to them. I personally know a lot of students who have opted for say, Indian English literature, American novel, and let's say something like uh, Commonwealth literature. So these three are three different papers altogether. So it is the cluster that would help you appreciate that specialization better. For instance, a paper like American literature, American novel, and maybe something associated with that will form a cluster. So that may be a reason why they would have probably, uh, you know, reshuffled these courses all together. I'm not exactly sure about the morale though, but then I assume, hypothesize that this could be the reason. So as far as MEG7 is concerned, whether it is in the first year or whether it is in the second year, the paper is titled Indian English Literature. Now let me talk to you about the two possibilities that our learners do to this particular paper. A majority of learners opt MEG7, Indian English Literature, for a simple reason. Before saying that, let me ask you that. Why did you opt for this paper? What, what attracted you to MEG7? I already told you, this is not gonna be a monotonous lecture spree. This is gonna be an interactive session where we'll be dealing with these sorts of, uh, what do you call it, thought provoking discussions. Sir, I have done uh, DED, that is uh, JBT in uh, local language, uh, where uh -huh. they, uh, uh, I have uh, you know, read about the elementary session of English in that particular course. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very basic things for me that I choose uh, this particular course, this particular, uh, you know, code MSG7. That is why. Okay, great. Great to know, Mamtaji. Others? Others, if you could please share your views on why you opted for MSG7. Um. As I already said, I have some uh, knowledge of what the paper would be. I, and I really like the paper during my degree. And most importantly, uh, if we learn about British literature, American literature, what's the point if we don't know about our own literature? Great. That, that's, that's a good observation, Shreya. Thank you. Great. 
we'll come back to that post colonial spirit a little while later okay others what made you choose mm-hmm. mg7 yes savita ji go on. sir i think uh, i have selected because uh, i think that i would be easily able to connect to the indian literature than american or british because coming completely from a different background yeah, <laughs> it could have been totally different. understand great that's that's an honest an opinion cannot be honest much honest than this spot on okay anybody else would like to add to it now that three to four people have given their opinion the starting trouble is gone so i think it makes things easier and google tells me that there are 25 people out here please go on what made you choose mag7 for your first or second or whatever year that you are in i chose mag7 cause i had some indian literature in my graduation mm-hmm. what is your name if i may ask nivedita nivedita okay your, your gmail id says something else also learners please make sure you log in with the mail id that has your name okay it's okay for today but from tomorrow onwards please make sure you join with your name so that i can address you on that name okay thank you nivedita others anyone else would like to add to it any additions on why you opted for mag7 yeah all right we'll take that for the time being so when i ask my learners why did you offer mag7 there are two different or would you choose mag7 there are two different answers that i get from my learners there are learners who say i opted for mag7 because that is the easiest paper that's going to be the easiest paper for me because i'm an indian not the way shreya put it not a way of owning it up as ours or indigenous but rather as a way of covering up for the flips that we have as a non native speaker of english there are learners who own up this as something wherein their english is not that good they struggle with all the other papers including mag2 and mag5 and uh, they believe that mag7 is going to be really easier so that's one reason why most of them opt for that paper and then there are there's a point in what shreya said we as non native speakers of english we as post colonial subjects of britain oh sorry colonial subjects of britain um, what is the point in learning british and american literatures and not learning or or ignoring what could be called indigenous indian literature so in that sense uh, a taste to learn or to go through indian english literature is really appreciated once you learn indian english literature you will get to know our locales our writers how they have contributed to its development and so on and so forth but when we get started with the discussion we should be aware that there is a majority at the other end who look at indian indian writing in english contemptuously i'm not talking about the britishers or americans or canadians or other occident western people but i'm talking about people in the indian academy who look at indian writing in english or indian english literature with contempt for the obvious reason when you look from a canonical perspective when you look from an elitist perspective when you look at a british shakespearean tongue or when you look at uh, uh, the writings of alexander pope or jane austen or uh, james joyce or for that sake even sylvia plath people find indian writers to be too simple and we have this popular misconception right from the beginning that uh, english has to be complex anybody who speaks high flyer english for instance sashi tharoor is great that is a popular misconception that we brood over that post colonial mentality so based on that post colonial mentality there are quite a lot of people in the indian academy who look at indian english literature with contempt or with remorse so the moment they see optional paper indian english literature they have a raised eyebrow and say why why on earth did you choose this paper there are quite a lot of other papers to choose from why did you offer indian english literature strange right okay before addressing why indian english literature very quickly let me talk to you about the clusters that you spoke about mag 14 in particular modern indian literatures in translation or contemporary indian literatures in translation 
that's a paper that I've been dealing with for the last four or five years. But ever since it has turned online, I've had a pan Indian audience like you. And uh, in the previous batches, we were fortunate to have a lot of brilliant students and uh, we ended up attempting translation. That's actually the outcome of that paper, not put down by IGNU, not prescribed by IGNU, but because we had a lot of vibrant talents, we came together, we brainstormed and we came up with a couple of anthologies. The other one is due. Uh, the next one is coming out first week or second week of April. I'll keep you posted. So nonetheless, these are papers, unlike MEG 7, MEG 14 and 15, 15 is comparative literature. These two papers have a lot more to do with daily day-to-day -day affairs because it is deeply rooted in our cultural matters. The writers and uh, the works can be relatable by us because we live in that cultural NUI and uh, it is relatable to us. The day-to-day -day life occurrences there uh, are something that we could relate to. And hence, also there is this multicultural aspect that would come in. Just like in this class, we have people from Karnataka, we have people from Delhi, we have people from Bangalore, we have people from Kerala. So we have different cultures coming together into this particular online classroom. So this is something that can be boosted in MEG 14 and 15. In those two papers, we have this multicultural element which adds spice to what we try to come up with. So that's something I would uh, recommend you later, but then com coming back to MEG 7, there is this debate as to whether you should choose that paper or not. I know you have put in that foot ahead, so I don't want to discourage you. I don't want to threaten you, but I just want to caution you. Not from the side that Shreya was, but then from the opposite side. I would just like to caution you as you step forward with MEG 7. MEG 7 is not the Indian English literature that you would have learned during your bachelor's. MEG 7 offered by IGNU is not a paper that could be termed a cakewalk. It's not an easy paper. I'll tell you why in a couple of seconds from now. MEG 7 is not a paper that is going to be easy if your language is poor. Definitely not. It is a complex paper. And not only about MEG 7, if and whenever you have to make choices in IGNU, I would recommend you to go and have a look at two to three resources, which is freely available online. One is previous year question papers, two assignments, three syllabus. The moment you go and have a look at these three parameters, I repeat, previous year question papers, previous year assignments and uh, the syllabus. Okay, so yeah, I didn't mean it will be a cakewalk, but then I'm talking about people who believe that the same sort of people who come and opt BA English literature thinking that it's only going to be uh, stories and poems. Sometimes we come up with theory and phonetics and linguistics and the game entirely takes a U-turn. So I was just referring to that. No offense to the efforts that you have put in during your bachelor's. Okay, so I was trying to tell you that go back to question papers, previous year question papers, go back to assignment questions and also have a look at the syllabus. These are three parameters that will guide you on whether or not you should opt for a particular paper. I understand that you have opted for MEG 7, so I'm not gonna try to dissuade you, but I'll try to caution you on how to move forward. In order to do so, let me first start with the previous year question papers. Just give me a second and show you this particular page that you all should be aware of. Okay, so this is a page, this is a page you know web help that you should access and you may go to this particular link and you can have access to almost 10 plus years of previous year question papers. And for those who have MEG 7 in the first year, please be wary that it's in the second year right now. And uh, I'm just opting for December 2021 and June 2021, just for the sake of convenience. And the moment you choose those tabs, you'll be taken to this particular web page. Don't be scared, just, go, just scroll down. Our understanding is that English belongs to humanities. It does not belong to social sciences. You scroll down later, you have it in humanities, not social sciences, but humanities, School of Humanities you will come across this option called Masters in English. Click the option 
and you will be again taken to a huge repertoire of courses under English. None of these are of appeal to you. Just scroll down. You will be taken to something called Masters in English. There you have this paper called MEG7. We have, you, can, you can apply this to all the other papers. I'm taking MEG7 because I'm dealing with MEG7. Okay, so opt MEG7 and you'll be taken to the model question paper. The moment you look at the model question paper, if this were an offline class, I'm sure you will have a loud moan at this point of time by looking at this question paper. Why? Because the question paper begins with something that most of our learners hate in MEG1 and MEG2. Annotations. The question paper greets you with mandatory annotations from the list of poems that's prescribed in uh, block number seven. Mind you, block seven doesn't really have that list of poems, but then that's just uh, summarized. You have to go and figure out those poems, read them, be thorough with the lines and uh, attempt those annotations. It's really a difficult task. I totally understand. But then you have mandatory four questions in the first section, four to five questions in the first section, which you have to answer. Then you have four essay questions, or it could also be three essay questions and a short note. And uh, you will have or option only within the essay question. You could see that. Okay. So that kind of minimizes your options as far as comparative readings are concerned. I'll give you one more example due to the lack of time. From December 2021, let's move to June 2021. Scroll down, School of Humanities, go to Masters in English. You go to SOH, then you scroll down and you come to Masters in English and uh, MEG7, Indian English Literature. And this is your question page. If it is visible to you, you could see that <clears throat> there are four mandatory annotations from the poems prescribed. Then you have essay questions with an OR option. And the OR option is, bit to, is within the question. It is not something that is inter, intra question. Okay, so that's something that you need to be aware of. This is regarding the question paper. I'm not scaring you, but I'm just. So what happens here is. Yes, Nehaji, please go on. Sir, as you are going through the previous paper, I have also gone through them. And what I have observed is like there is some kind of a similarity. Like in mm -hmm. question number two, uh, Mukul Raj Anand, Untouchable, and Raja Rao Kantapura always come. So is there yes. a fixed practice? No, that's exactly what I was referring to. When you refer to previous year question papers, there may be certain parameters or structures that you may find to be recurring. But that occurrence of recurrence is not a guarantee. It's not a promise. If I tell you that in the second section, a trend can be seen that the core question would be between untouchable and Kantapura. And you skip Kantapura in order to write untouchable. You don't prepare Kantapura. There is always a possibility that this format may be thwarted with. And then you would come back and question me. Sir, you only told us it is Kantapura versus Untouchable. This time it was Kantapura versus Midnight Children. It's possible. Because one thing about Igno question papers is that it keeps varying. It is not the same person who sets the question paper every single time. There may be a question or two that repeats. Because you can't ask 20 things about a particular thing. Let's take the case of uh, Kantapura. How many questions can you frame from Kantapura? So there could be 10 to 15 questions which are basic. The story doesn't change over two decades, right? Whether you appear for Kantapura in 1999 or 2029, in three decades, Raja Rao's Kantapura remains the same. The questions somewhat remain the same. So having a look at model question papers would give you an idea on how to approach the paper, how to approach the text, how to read and prepare for the question papers, or for the exams, I'm sorry, how to prepare for the question papers. So these are certain things that you need to be aware of. Nothing else. Do not get carried away by patterns because pattern can change 
at any point of time. I totally got you, Neha ji. That's why I'm trying to caution you. There is always a risk that you may leave something out. You may prepare untouchable, and maybe you will have a you know quorum between Raja Rao and uh, let's say R K Narayan, and you have not prepared both, and you will be at a soup because that's mandatory, right? You, if you don't write, you lose twenty marks. It's straightforward, as simple as that. So never never leave something. Have some idea of something, at least to fill in some gas and write something. Have some basic idea about each and every book or every text that's been prescribed. Okay. So this is your model question, uh, no, previous year question paper. I've shown you two for demonstration purposes. There could be instances, that's why I told you, uh, let me clarify this as well, Nehaji. You could see that in the two question papers that I've shown you, there is a first section where there is seven to eight questions of which you have to write four annotations. And there are four essay questions with eight questions uh, as options. But there have been rare instances where in question number three or four, you will be asked to write two to four short notes out of say six or seven questions. So when that be asked, your planning for the essay is gone, right? You had prepared for an essay, but you are asked to write three to four or two to four short notes. They ask you to write about Harikata, or they ask you to write about the writing style of Ruskin Bond, or they ask you to write a character sketch of somebody. Or they ask to write, they ask you to write about the versification in Toru Dutt or in Tagore or in Aurobindo. So then it becomes completely complex. So be prepared for all sorts of mishaps, but going through a question paper would give you an idea on how to approach this. Again, I'll give you a demonstration, an example that will make things a bit more clear to you. I'm not sure whether it's MEG 11 or MEG. Uh, I forgot, American literature or American novel. I think American novel. In the paper American novel, it's very straightforward and simple. You only have five essays, no annotations. There may be a short note here and there sometimes, but mostly it's five essays with 10 questions. So when you are preparing for a paper like that, you don't need to go in depth. Same with MEG3, British novel. You have only 10 essay questions of which you have to answer five. So you know five stories, you can somehow write the summary and score marks. But with papers with annotations, let's say like MEG2, MEG7, MEG14, MEG15, you can't do that. You will have to be aware of the text thoroughly, at least those which are asked for annotation. In case of MEG7, annotation will be asked only from poems. So you have to read all the poems thoroughly. So I was trying to tell you that as far as the question papers are concerned, understanding the nature of the question paper would help you prepare for the examinations and to approach the paper in a better way. I'm not taking away the in-depth reading, but then as students, we'll always be looking how to pass and get good marks. So for MEG, for American novel or British, uh, British novel, you just need to know the story. You can write essays and pass, but not the case with MEG 7. Okay. So very quickly, let's move on from the question paper to assignment questions. I think I've already shared the link of the question papers. Let me share that once again, just in case you didn't get that. Okay. Um, let me also share with you the link of IGNO assignments. That's also critical to you. It will also help you in preparing for the examination because it'll get to, it'll tell you what are the questions that you could look forward to. So I've shared the link of the assignments. I'll share, I'll share my screen once again and take you through that um, questions. Okay. This is IGNO assignment questions. You can see the entire, the whole array of questions. MEG 7 is something that we are looking at. I understand that there could be two batches here. There could be a third batch whose questions are not uploaded. Please wait, that will happen later. But this is, up, this is updated periodically. You could see July and Jan. So by June, July, this would be updated. You could see that at least four years or three years question papers are available. There. So let me just share my screen with you and take you to the assignment questions. Yes, Ramya, do you want to say something? I could see your hand raised. Ramya? Sorry, sir. No, sir. Okay, no problems. Uh, all right. So this is the assignment section. The questions for July 22 and Jan 2023 section. 
I hope you belong to the session. And uh, these are the questions that you have already answered. Most of you said that you have completed your assignments. So have a look at this. There could be a few questions on writing a short note. Then there could be essay questions. Mind you, you don't have options. You have five questions. You have to answer all the questions that's been given. Look at the one before that, July 21 and Jan 2022 session. Again, you have five short notes here of which you can write four. Oh no, you have to write five. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but then yeah, you have to write all the five questions and uh, that's how it is. You don't have an alternative. If you remember in MEG2, you have nine to 10 questions of which you only had to answer five. So there was a bit of a liberty, a freedom to choose what to write and what not. But here in MEG7, you don't have that choice. You have to mandatorily attempt all the questions that are given. And uh, when a particular question is given in assignment, remember that there are different types of questions. Very quickly, despite the lack of time, very quickly, let me take you through these questions. I'm not, I'm not gonna answer the questions for you, but let me partially answer a few queries that learners ask. First of all, how many pages should you write to answer these questions? That's a question that most of the learners ask me. I often tell them that pages are immaterial. Even if you write 100 pages and it's not worth enough, you are gonna get only 30 marks. I know learners who write only 40 pages and still get 90, 95 marks. So it is not pages that would be a few marks, but it is how convincingly you come up with your answers that matter. So regarding that matter per se, you could see in this particular question paper or the two question papers that I've shown you for a few assignments, you are asked to write short notes and essays. So when it comes to short notes, what is the mark? It is five mark. So would you go on to write four pages, five pages, six pages for five marks? No. The question clearly states, write a short note. Whenever I go through assignments, I come across people writing three to four pages for a short note. You're not asked to write an essay, come on. It's a short note. So how short a short note should be? It should be somewhere between let's say three fourth to one, one and a half page maximum. One page is ideal. When I say one page of A4 size, uh, I don't quite have a demonstrative example with me right now, but I hope you understand what an A4 means. So in an A4 size, have a one full page or three fourth, that is 75 percentage of the page or maximum a page and a half. That is one page and on the back of that half, not more than that for a short note. When it comes to an essay question, ideally, it is three to three and a half pages. When I say pages, I'm talking about both sides. This is page one, this is page two, page three, and maybe two and a half. Let's continue with the assignment yes. question. Okay. So let's continue with the assignment question. My screen was okay. okay. Screen screen. Just give me a second. Let me go back to those questions. Yeah. So I was talking to you about the page length. So when it comes to the page length of an assignment, a short note can be as short as a page or a page and a half. And an essay can be as long as let's say three, three and a half pages, page one, page two, page three, and say three and a half, not more than that. Don't write 10 to 10 to 15, 20 pages of essays. It's totally not required. And when I say three, three and a half, that's a standard thing, but don't stick to three and a half if your handwriting is too big. There are people who write four sentences and one page is full. So then don't say, sir, you only said three and a half pages. I've written three and a half pages. So that's a different thing. But on a normal scale, three, three and a half pages is what I mean, wherein you write say 15 to 20 lines on a page. Okay, so that's regarding the assignment. So regarding the questions, there could be different types of questions. So please be wary of what the question is and answer to the question. Do not muddle around. For your exam, you may still do that if you don't know the answer. But for the assignment, because you have all the resources to look at, don't muddle around. Don't just uh, you know fill in the gas to fill the assignment. Answer to the question. <laughs> for instance, 
Question number two is about commenting the structure and techniques used by Anita Desai in clear light of the day. So here the reference is to the structure and techniques used by her, not to the story, not to the plot, not to the character analysis. The question is directly about the structure and the technique that she has used. So there, if you write the summary of the story, you're not going to get marks. Similarly, have a look at question number four. What makes India special for Aurobindo is spiritually made the leading motive and the determining power of both the inner and the outer life. Do you agree? So what actually makes India special as far as Aurobindo is concerned is this. So what is your take on this? Do you agree? Elaborate Aurobindo's view on Indian culture. So there are two positions that you are supposed to take here. What most of the learners do is they forget, they conveniently forget the first part and answer the second. They go on to read the study material, copy the material from there and write or elaborate the Aurobindo's, uh, elaborate Aurobindo's view on Indian culture. They conveniently ignore whether they agree or disagree with his views. So if you agree or disagree, it's not simply saying, yes, I agree with Aurobindo's view. It is dash, dash, dash. But it's also about bringing in your perceptions on whatever he has stated. It's not again about saying yes everywhere, but also to connect it in a rational manner. Give valid reasons and substantiate why you agree to something and why you don't agree to something. There could be agreements and disagreements within the perceptions as well. So state that in black and white, state that clearly and address that question. Do not summarize everything. In the meanwhile, when you speak about question number five, Mulkraj Aran's novel portrays Indian social problems realistically. Discuss with reference to the novel Untouchable. Here, there are two literary phenomenon that comes forth. One is realism. The second one is social realism. Yeah, something that can be seen, say, for instance, in Charles Dickens. Right? There is a sort of social realism, problems that is imminent in the society, that is being projected by Mulkraj Anand in the novel Untouchable, which throws light into the caste system in India. So there you have to put not only a summary analysis, but you also have to bring forth a socio-realistic analysis. You have to bring in the tools of social realism. Maybe you ought to bring in observations on uh, Mulkraj Anand's contemporaries who followed the same technique or who didn't follow the technique in their novels. You can bring in the British examples, say for instance of Charles Dickens, and see how Mulkraj Anand differs from these writers. Only then that answer becomes complete. If you write a summary that doesn't justify that question, more often than not in IGNO assignments, that is where the learners have a handicap. They don't uh, go beyond the summary. Okay, so that's where we will, for the time being, stop with the assignments. We have discussed question papers. We have discussed assignments. Now we are moving on to the study materials or syllabus that Bhavna Singh Ji had asked a little while ago. When it comes to study materials, let me give you a few instructions. When you enroll to do your course in IGNU, IGNU clearly states that you have a choice. I believe it still exists. Let's say, suppose your fee is 9,000 Indian rupees. This is just a hypothetical figure. Don't correct me saying it's 5,000 or 10,000. Let's say if your fee is 9,000 Indian rupees, the application window clearly states that if you want textbooks, you have to pay 9,000. And if you don't want textbook, pay say a little bit less, say pay 8,000 or 7,500 or whatever it is. The reason why they state that is because there is, these study materials are already uploaded in the online platform of IGN. So you can download them for free. You can download these PDFs for free. So if you want to save paper, if you want to save money, if you want to save the transportation delays, you can unsubscribe and you can read them online. Or if you are an old school learner like me, who want to touch, smell, underline, and do all these things in the textbook, if you want a proper textbook per se, then subscribe, pay the full fee, and wait for the material to arrive and then read that. So I'll give you two or three solutions because more often than not, when we come to these contact classes, one problem that learners talk to us is about the delay in study materials. 
it always happens with igno but trust me that is not a fault from the end of it because igno caters to lakhs of learners across the country dealing with different subjects so it is not humanly possible to send to dispatch all the study materials to all the learners within say two weeks three weeks one month two months so sometimes it may take five months six months seven months there would be a delay in transit sometimes the materials would get lost in transit you have to complain and they will again dispatch until again take two to three months this is a recurring phenomenon in it so what are the solutions i'll tell you one you can download the soft copies from the web i'll give you a link right now there are other links and there are apps from which you can do that as well two contact the nearest study center and they have they'll have a library for instance rc kochin has a library have library access you can go to the library there will be blocks there previous years blocks there you can use them as reference materials and go through them or take photocopies or print outs of this and study that's up to you the choice is yours or you can entirely ignore the blocks and maybe get the summaries and videos and uh, act accordingly that's up to you but then i'm just presenting you with some possibilities as far as mg7 is concerned of course with other blocks as well but i'm sticking to mg7 because i'm teaching mg7 i've shared a link in the chat box i'll show you the page this is egan kosh where you have all these study materials here this is indian english literature we have eight blocks and these are the materials i'm just opening poetry for your convenience for your reference so the moment you click poetry you will be taken to various sub units when you get the textbook all these units would be clubbed together but when you when you download online different units would be individual pdfs again a secret learning recipe if you take the textbook there will be 200 pages of six units stuck together so you would feel bored or you would feel a little bit reluctant to get started the moment you go online there is only 10 to 15 pages per unit so we feel like okay let's give it a try you know dekhte hai ek bar we feel like that so we we will try to explore that page just give me a second uh yeah so for the, just for the sake of it i am opening nizim asikhil and kamala das the moment you click that you have this option click view or open then a new tab opens up and a new unit the, do, the, the pdf that you click gets open you can download it by clicking this download arrow for the time being i'm not attempting that so you could see this is barely a 10 page 14 page unit and you will feel slightly inspired to read this so every unit every block every paper you have it available in that e gyan kosh website so if you want bona ji you could download that until your study material arrives but please note that in these study materials you only have an overview of these books that is a summary of these summary and analysis of these poems you don't have the poem fully per se so for that you have to depend on the web or else you may struggle when the when it comes to attempting the annotation part okay that is regarding the study materials i hope that's clear if you have any queries regarding this you may feel free to ask right now itself buna ji sorry bhavna ji and anyone else if you have any queries regarding the study material part uh, sir i had this query uh, when i took admission i was uh, living in mathura okay and mm-hmm. in a month or so i'm getting married and now i'll be shifting to mangalore uh uh-huh. so the regional center there will be bangalore and here was noida so can i change that regional center yes you can you may you may give in an application to change your regional center from uh, this place to that place that's totally permissible and also no study center for giving exams and all yeah exam center to when you apply for the exam they'll ask you for the choice even if you have okay. a regional center in bangalore and let's say you are in kerala back then you can choose kerala as your exam center that's totally fine that comes in that in that latter part when you apply for the exams you will be given that choice okay sir thank you sir great anybody else who have any queries regarding the study material if there is nothing we will quickly move on to other sources that you may find to be interesting 
Any further queries? Okay, so in that case, let me share a few links that would be immensely useful for you while preparing for any of your papers under MEG. It's not only about, let's say, uh, it's not only about uh, Indian English literature, but also about the other courses as well. There is this site called EPG Patshala, which comes under the InflipNet server. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may not be familiar with it, but nonetheless, regardless of all that, I request you to go through this. Here you have an option called English. So when you click into that option, a new tab will open and you have two options like this. That's papers. You have different papers and those papers are listed there. This is not purely about IGNO syllabus. This is a general broad syllabus of, in, of these papers in English. So I'm choosing Indian writing in English. So if you are fortunate, you will come across quite a lot of papers that you are coming across in this text or in this paper, right? So you can click that and have access to these papers. Here it's more about concepts. I'll, I'll give you one regarding, okay, MEG5, because you said it's a mandatory paper. Here it is paper 10, literary criticism and theory. You choose MEG5, sorry, MEG10. And then you have this uh, Aristotle's analysis of tragedy. The moment you click that, you have three options, e-text, learn more, and self-learn. E-text is basically a 15 to 20 page PDF prepared by central university professors who will give you an overview to all the aspects regarding to the particular topic that you are trying to deal with. If you go through that PDF, you will have a basic analysis of the text. You will have an idea of where to expect the questions from and have a basic idea, the bare minimal requisites of that text. Learn more is something that most of us won't go back. They are references. If you want to read more about the text, here are the references. It's not always about textbook. There could be online websites, there could be video links, and so on and so forth. So watch out for that. It need not always be textbook per se. There could be video links, audio links, um, online websites, and so on. Self-learning is a video lecture again by a central university professor. Let me just reload this, there's a technical error from their side. All right. Okay. Okay. So the moment you click that, okay, now there is some error, but then the moment you click that, you will be, tre you will be treated with a 30 to 50 minute lecture on that particular topic. Again, by central university professors. So that will be highly information filled. There would be PPTs, there would be visual slides and so on and so forth, which would help you learn better. So EPG is one server that I would recommend you to have a look at. Just a second. Okay. Uh... I'm just trying to get a link. Allow me a minute. Yeah. So there was the site called megmentors.com, which I understand is currently, due to some reason, blocked by Google. It is a free source platform. Yes, it's available. megmentor.com, which would inform you about the classes that are going on. It has study materials and links to various classes and so on and so forth. Let me share the site. Yeah, this is megmentors.com. The site would give you idea about where the classes are going, what the timings are, whether you want to apply or not. Just click there. The link will be there and you could join the classes. There would be discussion forums, syllabus, group studies. I understand they also have a WhatsApp group. I am in no way associated with them, but then on a no-profit motion, I'm just suggesting you a lot of my former learners say that meg mentors have been really helpful for them because they don't charge anything from you but they give you an entire course overview so that's one thing that you could explore later if you want there are quite a lot of topics that are covered based on your syllabus you may also contribute if you require at a later point of time to meg mentors catalog okay now Let me share with you a few more 
links this is a youtube channel link on exclusively on indian writing in english again not based on igno syllabus but then you may find some of the uh, topics from igno syllabus like ruskin bond rk narayan um, mulkraj anand untouchable and so on and so forth so you make again darwala nisim ezekiel and so on so this is a useful link that you could access if you want to and uh, that may help you in uh, approaching the subject in a better manner that's why i said if you have these resources it's not mandatory that you attend my classes except for today's classes because i'm giving you all the guidance today from tomorrow onwards when i'll deal with this topics even if you miss my class you can go to these pages and you can watch or read and you can learn things or understand things by its own similarly there is this youtube channel on indian uh, english literature they have these topics on literatures in english which would again be extremely useful to you once again the link is shared in the chat box sure komal ji i am sharing the link with you in a moment here you go so the link has been shared with you in the chat box <clears throat> now this is a section on toru dat it is prescribed in igno syllabus our kashorina tree tree and uh, this is a 30 minute lecture on our kashorina tree so if you want to have a look at that you may go and access that link similarly this is a broader page by cec which is on various topics in english and here and there there are certain glimpses on diasporic writing tagore's poetry premchand short stories indian english literature writing in india and so on so selectively you may approach this particular page and have a look at these videos in order to enlighten yourself again i'd like to share this particular lecture where they discuss about the literary texts in indian writing in english an introductory lecture that is which would be highly useful in appreciating this paper called mag7 so that's another one to look out for so i'm sharing a few links that could be useful to you in this regard <coughs> allow me a minute yes and for the learners from kerala the malayali learners who would be ruining that okay the sir is not going to talk to us in malayalam because we have a pan indian learner base in this class this is a youtube lecture on indian writing in english which is in malayalam you may go through those videos if you feel like if you think only listening in a malayalam lecture uh, listening to a malayalam lecture could help you uh, understand the topics better this is a channel that you could have a look at i'm sorry i think i accidentally closed that allow me a minute so that's one paper that you could have a sorry one channel that you could have a look at also did i miss something i think i have almost handled everything here yeah and uh, a couple of external resources just for your reference just in case you are struggling with mag2 that is british drama you may go through this particular channel which discusses in detail the evolution and transformation of drama it includes 49 videos with a lot of animations that would help you learn better in ramya do you have any question see your hand raised ramya or rhetoric doesn't matter doesn't matter i'll reshare that okay so this is the site called maxter don't get scared by what they are showing here just ignore that 
they charge only 49 rupees for three months which is highly cheap because they have quite a lot of catalogs here so maxter is a website which has a lot of books magazines and most importantly they have a lot of journals so for instance if you want to study something like if you want to say for instance appear for ielts there are quite a lot of books regarding ielts available for free or if you want to read something regarding shakespeare all right there are illustrative versions of shakespeare available for free so similarly there are a lot of things that you could read current affairs uh, openings current affairs newspapers entertainments and so on uh, all you need to do is go to maxter uh, start a trial pack just a second yep start, uh, start a trial pack which will be for a month then add any newspaper to the cart six rupees ten rupees and then they'll naturally show you a three month pack where you have to pay 49 rupees to subscribe maxter so i'll share the link of maxter with you as well it could also be of high use to you when it comes to your overall literary journey all right i i just discontinued my screen share i i'm just contemplating if i missed anything uh in the process while sharing these things i've shared the um question papers assignments i've shared the syllabus i've shared the study material link i've shared the youtube links epg partshala mac mentors max yep i think that's pretty much it so great if you have any queries the floor is open we have 10 to 15 minutes and because it's day one generally the q and a is open at 7 15 7 20 because it's at 7 20 today because it's day one and uh, we have almost covered things in a jiffy i was kind of rushing through all that so if you have any queries regarding whatever i have discussed so far or even if you have a feedback or anything that you want to know or if you want to generally have some inputs on literature feel free to ask we have all the time in the world and time is gold to us because we don't get sessions the way regular learners get we only get five to ten contact sessions so whatever you could get from me would be gold so feel free to open up and class malayalathil edukkilla ne parannullu chodyam malayalathil choikkunnundu koyappunnu illado ningal aa perile naanichittu chodyam choikkaram mindare irikkanda ningalku malayalam parayunnathana comfortable engil ningal malayalathil chodyam choichu oru koyappu illa excuse me sir yes please uh, the recorded sessions are they exclusively for the students who belong to that rc or can anybody access it <laughs> uh, see it will be in the public domain youtube is a public domain the videos will be uploaded to the rc coaching youtube channel so it could be accessed if you have the link or if you follow rc coaching you could access it from anywhere across the group i i, I, oh, I have quite a lot of learners you. i have quite a lot of learners who are non igno learners who accidentally happen to come and listen to my lectures over YouTube and they text me by finding me in LinkedIn and social media profiles and they text me for clarification regarding certain references that I stayed in the video lecture. So I can assure you that it goes globally. Anybody with internet connection and a YouTube channel subscription can access these videos. Thank you, sir. But again, like study material, the only problem is the delay in uploading these videos. It may take ages. Sometimes it may take six months to one year by the time you would have completed your course. It, it happens. It's not their fault because they have quite a lot of classes and courses running. This week itself, there are three courses that are running from RC Coaching. So to do that all together within a week or two or a month or two is really difficult for them because they have their office works to tend to as well. Yep. I have a question in the chat box. I have a doubt about assignment submission date. Is that excellent or not? I couldn't ask this to man due to some network issues. No problem. Arshida, as I told you, <clears throat> the questions related to assignments, examinations, etc. are technical and it has to be redirected to the RC. As a teacher, as an academic counselor, I can only give you clarity regarding subject oriented questions. When it comes to assignments, uh, assignment date, that is not assignments, assignment date, that is up, uh, up to the uh, RC and the center. So generally, the assignment dates may be extended. When you join for our classes, please make sure you join from your email IDs with your name as designation. Uh, do not use fictitious name or other names. You log in with your mail ID so that we'll be able to let you in. More often what happens is there are people who use fake names and log in and they cause all the sort of disturbances in the classroom, which is 
highly unappreciated. I understand that sometimes you may not have such intentions, but we look at that from a suspectable point of view. So uh, sometimes you may not get access to into the class. So make sure that you log in with your proper names and uh, yeah, any other queries. We still have time. Um, somebody asked me how to prepare for the assignment. That's exactly what we dealt in the first part of today's lecture. I told you how to analyze the questions, how to answer the questions and try not to summarize the questions. I've also given deep insights into uh, how many pages are required for assignments. And there is one thing I forgot to tell you. So thank you for that question. Um, yeah, uh, Ignos assignment question clearly states that we have an anti-plagiarism policy, a strict anti-plagiarism policy. More often than not, we get answers which are exactly copied from the web or the study materials. So I often tell my learners whether it's offline class because we keep meeting every now and then. I keep mocking them in a very lighthearted way. I tell them in order to read your answer, I don't need to look at your assignment. I could just go back to the blocks and read that. I've done that several times already. So I urge all my learners to apply your analytical skills, to apply your language skills, and to come up with answers which are your own. If not 100%, at least 70% your own. Try to come up with original answers, original observations. Try to bring in your language into it. That's what's gonna help you progress further. You may cheat me sometimes. You may cheat your examiner. You may copy from some unknown source that cannot be identified and get 80, 90 marks. But when you go for an interview, when you go for a job, when you become teachers, you will struggle. So in a way, despite the handicaps that IGNO has, I try to make my learners equipped for that market ready scenario. That's why I tell I, I keep telling you that when we taught MEG 14 during the Corona and post Corona period, our learners combined together across India to bring out two volumes of translation. It's still available in the web, you could check. And another version is coming on the first week of April. And all these are translations of various indigenous stories from various parts of India. There is an Oriya sort story, there is a Jharkhand, there's one from Jharkhand, there is a Marathi story, there's a Bengali story, and they're all put together into use. So when you write an assignments, try to be original, do not copy paste, do not write. Again, you know, that's why you know, emphasizes on writing your assignments. Typed or printed copies are not accepted. It's precisely for that reason, because the moment we say typed or printed copies are accepted, you're gonna copy paste from the web and send it to us. We don't want you to copy. Still 80% of the assignments that we get are copied. And we are not at all lenient with such papers. We go to the extent of failing those candidates and asking them to rewrite their assignments. Dr. Prema is not here, otherwise she would have enlightened you about this. Whatever papers that I deal with, one charge that often comes against me is that this guy has failed, let's say 70% of students. That's because I keep telling in the classes, don't copy, don't copy, don't copy. Then every time I get an assignment, I can easily mark it. Para 1, 2, 3 are from the study material. Para 4, 5, 6 are from Wikipedia. Para 7, 8, 9 is from Spark Notes. This is how it goes. And you're all postgraduate learners. Irrespective of where you stand in terms of your language or competency, you're supposed to read better materials and write better. Wikipedia is not a reliable source. You can go to Wikipedia and edit the content over there. You would have seen latest controversies like actor, Tamil actor Vijay getting married to Kirti Suresh and divorcing his wife, which has actually not happened. Some prankster did it and it went viral. Same happened with Indian cricketer Ravindra Jadeja. Somebody edited his profile as Sir Ravindra Jadeja, where he has not received that knighthood. Right? So you can go to Shakespeare's page and you could edit, or I could go and edit saying William Shakespeare is a Keralaite, who is the chief minister of Kerala from 2018 to 2023. So if you rely on Wikipedia, that shows that you are such a terrible learner. So do not resort to such second graded sources of you know, references. Your blocks are only primary materials of reference. You should go beyond the blocks. At the end of every block or chapter, there is quite a lot of references given. Even in the InfluentNet server that I showed you, the EPG Patshala, there are quite a lot of references listed. There are Routledge editions, there are Oxford companions, there are glossaries of Oxford, Bed Bedford, MHA Brahms and so on. So go refer to these books and come up with your proper answers.
Sahitya Academy, Kendra Sahitya Academy comes up with a lot of analysis on Indian literature in English. There are quite a lot of publications. You could access it from the nearest library. If you are from Cochin, there is this Ernakulam Public Library and EMS Public Library in Kakanad. So go access these libraries. So all this would help you come up with better assignments. Do not copy is a catch word that I forgot to mention earlier. So I'm just adding it right now. 